Right, welcome to the Diamond Map channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler in the UK for over 20 years, but then I left and now I live in Japan with my wife and kids and I'm making jewelry making instructional videos. Uh, if you like the kind of thing, why not click like and subscribe? Right, today is a bit of a, a bit unusual, a bit different. I'm trying something new. I like, I like trying new things. So I've got this channel going. So part of the channel is not just me teaching you what I already know. It's also inviting you on my journey of continuing to learn as well. I want to encourage people to learn. Always push your skills, push what you're comfortable with and uh, just venture into new grounds. So with that in mind, something I've always been impressed with and usually jewelers like me don't really consider it or don't really, they're not interested in it, but I've always been quite impressed with contemporary jewelry. I love the fact that it's really, really challenging traditional jewelry and what it is and how you define it. Like a piece of jewelry doesn't have to be gold, silver or platinum, it doesn't have to have gemstone. You don't have to spend 4,000 pounds just on a few parts to, to make a piece of jewelry. Like contemporary jewelry, it, it, it's not just design or wearability and comfort. It challenges all of that. And even the materials that are being used for, for essentially what, what is a piece of jewelry is essentially just like a body adornment, a bit of decoration you wear. It really brings art into it. So there's a real appreciation of design, which I've always really admired. Uh, so yeah, things like comfort and wearability kind of gets pushed to the back a little bit as, as the art really takes, takes over. Um, it's, that's just what came to my mind when, if you ask me what contemporary jewelry is, but that's what I kind of thing I would have said to you. Uh, but I wasn't 100% sure. It's a difficult thing to kind of pin down. Like if I saw pictures or pieces of jewellery mixed with contemporary jewellery, I could say confidently what I believe was contemporary jewellery, but at the same time to actually explain what it is, is quite hard. So I googled it and it appears that everyone has this trouble with <laughs> contemporary jewellery. It doesn't really have a, a definitive definition. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I've, I've studied a few things, like I even, I even printed this out. This was a, a thesis by Ju, Julie, Jilu Zhang. This was her 2016 thesis for her master's degree. Um, yeah, I, I printed it out. This is a really good, good read on, on, this is just me studying, trying to find out what contemporary jewelry is. This was like more specific to how you display it, a, a little bit about what it is and how it, how it sits in the, in the jewelry world. But um, this was uh, really specifically trying to focus on how you display it and how people interact with it when it's in exp exhibitions and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this was good. I learned a lot from that. So thank you, Jilu, Julie Zhang. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm very sorry. Uh, so yeah, I, I studied it a little bit. And um, yeah, born in the 60s and all this time later, people are still struggling to really define it. Uh, so that, that, I, I quite like that. It's kind of gives it a kind of bit of mysteriousness, a bit of like, I find that fun. So I like the fact that it's, uh, well, it's just art, isn't it? It's hard to really tell people what is and what isn't art. Everyone's got their own mind. Uh, jewelers, especially jewelers, kind of people I've worked with throughout the career, like normal traditional jewelers, generally are unimpressed with contemporary jewelry. They are, they just see it all as a bit arty farty, a bit arts and crafts, but I, I'm, I'm appreciating the design, the extra design that's put into it. In here, this. Uh, yeah, this was in that thesis. Uh, but what exactly is contemporary jewellery? The definition continues be, to be debated in scholarly and popular publications through exhibitions and in online forums. As Cone writes, Cone or Cohn, I don't know how to pronounce her name, um, she's an Australian jeweller but she's the, she seems to be some kind of leader in contemporary jewellery on the scene and uh, I researched on YouTube, she's always doing speeches and talks and stuff and seminars on contemporary jewellery and uh, she, she, I like her, she, she describes it as a, as a language, she sees it as a language. So I, I have to agree with that, it's like what, what does it mean, like, what is it saying to you? It's, it's a bit like that. Uh, her quote is, a quote from her is, what contemporary jewellery is and where it comes from is never entirely clear. And then Jilu has uh, continued with that saying, so the definition of contemporary jewellery is therefore fluid and evolves with the practices of the makers in the field. Uh, I really like that. I find that quite exciting. I think it's almost empowering because I could start making contemporary jewellery and then after I've got a few pieces, 
Uh, I'm there for someone who is participating and helping continue the movement go forward. So I think a piece of contemporary jewellery should be like a one-of-a-kind piece. Like as soon as you start making something with mass production in mind or like even a sale, it stops becoming a piece of art. It's you're sort of going down the avenue of it being a commodity. I think it should be one of a kind piece. So I, I'm quite enjoying the idea of like pushing some boundaries of like wearability, like different materials being used, uh, being really inventive with how you create it and the, and the design. Uh, that's that's more fun. That's more like a, a real artwork you're creating then. Right. So uh, this will be like a new show on the channel because I've got quite a few. Well, I say quite a few, like three, maybe four pieces I've got in mind I would like to make quite difficult to make. They won't be like an instructional guy showing you how to make it. This is like my artwork. It'll just be kind of me documenting mating, making them because there are, if you search contemporary jewellery on YouTube, there's a lot like that Susan Cohn, uh, like a lot of her speeches and stuff about what it is and exhibitions and stuff, but there's no one really making it on, on YouTube. So it could be a bit of a first if I start doing it. And uh, again, I like, I like the idea of inspiring other people to have a go. So maybe my usual crowd of subscribers are not going to be into this, but I hope, uh, I hope to find a new, new kind of audience as well. So appealing to more people. So um, yeah, anyway, right. This is what I started with, yeah. I did show, I think I shared a picture with this to the patrons like quite a while ago, but I was experimenting with S shapes. I just kind of drew two lines, S shapes. I was coiling this up. I wanted to understand, like get a finger size and then coil it round, but I wanted the curls to kind of go opposite each other. So it's sort of doing figures of eights, but not uniform round. I wanted a bit of flair to it. So by trying it in paper first, I can experiment how, much, how tight I coil it up, how they overlap each other. Uh, there's options for splitting it and opening things up, but just a lot of design going on. Um, Learned a lot just from mucking about bits of paper first because obviously it's much easier and quicker to do it paper than actually cutting it out of metal, turning it up and then not liking it. So I got, I got kind of close to what I had in mind or what I liked because this piece I'm first making is an amalgamation of, uh, I mean curves, my, I've done curvy, I'm trying to find pictures to put on the screen, but I've done like curvy colour faded paintings since years ago. I actually did quite well with my paintings, I had them exhibited and art galleries and in, uh, in a restaurant as well, where they were I sold six, I think, from a restaurant. That was great. <laughs> I should have continued with it. Uh, but yeah, just doing it for fun, just an enjoyment of just testing what I was capable of, really. And so the design evolved. And I did just before I stopped, so I think I stopped just before I moved to London, uh, started to go with like mathematical shapes, but fading the colours. So it had a real kind of handmade, natural feel to it. But the edges of these shapes were very mathematically perfect. I have a, a way of doing curves, very natural to me. And I used to design like le letters, like typography, like do design a whole alphabet, really difficult to get all the letters all suiting each other. So you can write any word with all the letters all mixed up in any kind of order to write different words. And they all kind of match each other. Very, very difficult. And then obviously English language, we got lowercase and uppercase capital letters. Uh, they all kind of have to make sense as well on the same design. Very hard to, to get it right. When I was really letting design go, getting really swirly, like I do a, again, I'll try and find pictures of, um, well, I may even have the actual designs here. I'll try and put some on the screen for you, but I'll just write a word. And it would just look like a, like a load of spaghetti, but there were very beautiful letters in there. So those curves, I have a natural way of curving lines. I've done that with metal. Uh, also, I used to break dance, yeah, um, but dance, there was this guy, he's like a legendary kind of b-boy from, from New York. He's like one of the first generation of like b-boys and he's like 50 something now and he's still doing it. He travels the world like teaching, does, doing workshops. Uh, he came to London, so I did a, did a workshop with him. Uh, I got on quite well with him, it was cool. But he said that, he called it taking pictures, yeah. So no matter, I could just, be, you could be doing like b-boying, like break dancing, doing the top rock or the footwork or power moves. Someone should be able to take a picture of you at any moment and you look good, you're in a good position, like a good body position, a proper style to it. At any moment, uh, you never look goofy or awkward at all. Uh, I kept that in mind, it's true, it works. I kept that in mind with this, like I should be able to rotate this piece of jewellery around at any, any time and then pause it and it will look nice. There'll be no like awkward front or back or it looks good looking down on it or it looks 
bad looking from the side. It should just be good from all angles. It's quite hard to do. Taking pictures, so keep that in mind. So see what I mean? It's an amalgamation of design, things I've done from years ago, things I've practiced through painting, typography, we've got b-boying, and jewellery. It's an amalgamation of all these things, my ability to actually work metal and get, get what I want. So that's what's going into this piece of contemporary jewellery that I'm making. So it's very me, very me in the history of my life and how I've lived it. Uh, you can't copy this, this is my artwork. So from wrapping that paper around, experimenting, getting to understand a few curves, there was a, a way I had it, I mean I rolled it up and I put a paper clip on it and then the sections I liked, I unraveled them and then shaped some thin strips of silver to those shapes that I liked as they are rolled up. They don't look that special when they're flat, but when they're rolled up they look really good. So these were thin kind of mock-up version, uh, just kind of parallel, I didn't really care too much about that. I want them to go narrower at the back and then also the piece of metal I'm working with is quite thick as well so it gives me an opportunity to narrow it down towards the back. So again, I'm so heavily influenced by traditional jewellery, it's going to be hard for me to go too wacky with a, a contemporary piece but this is, this is stage one, so let's see, see how I progress over time as I make more pieces. Probably going to come across as quite odd because I've, I'm envisioning what's going to happen with this metal, but for you guys watching, it's just be like, what's going on? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> so basically these shapes, I've got to replicate these shapes in thick metal, and then I'm going to roll them up to a certain size, but then they still need a lot of adjusting to get them together how I want. Uh, and then I'm thinking, it would work really nice as a pendant, but a pendant is too easy just to hang it on a chain and it's just a shape on a chain. I want this to be a, a ring. I think it's harder to get a nice ring out of this than it is just to bang it on a chain and call it a pendant. So I've got this one down. Just with this thicker bit of metal, I'm going to just copy that. So relatively easy. Start going the other way now. Which way was it? <laughs> this way. Let me put a black dot on that. <laughs> Sensible, isn't it? Just put a little X there, so I know where I'm working from. I'm using traditional tools, techniques, and materials, but I'm, I have a plan to do one in not even metal for my next design. Just, uh, if, if you enjoy creating and you're already a bit of a jeweler, I can't see any reason why you would not like to 
try contemporary jewellery. If you like making stuff and expressing yourself with designs and things you made, it's a uh, good thing to get into. So yeah, basically you see what I'm doing. I won't show you too much of this. Um, yeah, trying to replicate that. Okay, da -da, I've seen that. I have uh, sort of finished it. When I'm making a piece to mirror something else, like you do this kind of thing when you're making gallery wires for the back of pendants and whatever. Um, I like to hold them sort of mirroring each other. It kind of highlights where you've made mistakes. So I can see this curve there. It's quite a nice sort of sharp curve. Mine's really dull. It's a big flat section there. So I've got to, I've got to tweak that up. But if you keep putting them over the top of the other one, they it kind of gets, things like that get lost. You take it to the next level by holding them opposite each other, mirroring. So you check in for that nice symmetrical line. They should be really similar both sides. So yeah, there's my little problem area. But after that, it's pretty good. So I just soldered one up. I did the both, soldered that one up, it's turned up. It needs a lot of filing to get more shape into it. Then I got this one, just annealed it. So I'll just turn it up into, just got to join the ends up basically. I'll get a circle. I think it needs to end up slightly more eggy shape. But if I just get it a, a perfect circle first, if I'm lucky, it will go on my ring stick nicely. It might end up a bit big. I think it'll be okay. Get these in line now. And there, uh, yeah, that's right. If it was hooking that way, my um, my, I did my mock-up one. So this is working out quite nicely. I'll get a nice curve, no kinks or nothing. Well, I think I'm gonna put that on my ring stick. I might be all right. So yeah, basically turning that up, I'll get the ends nice and flat, join that up, and then it should sit inside that one. One's kind of scooping out this way, the other one's scooping out that way. I'm gonna narrow it down towards the back uh, so I can exaggerate some curves. And then also thin it off round the side so it goes thinner at the bottom. Again, this is like, this is contemporary jewellery light. This is my first, my first attempt. I'm still building up bravery to do something a bit mad. So bear with me on this one. Next one will be a bit more crazy, a bit more artistic, but I'm institutionalized <laughs> as a jeweller. <laughs> I'm stuck doing things traditionally, but I'm looking to break out of that. Yeah, I'll learn a bit, see what I do and what I find satisfying, what I enjoy more when it's finished or when I consider it finished or when I just get to a stage where, okay, right, I'm gonna move on to the next step. I've learned some things I wanna try for the next one. Then uh, it's, it's all progress. Okay, so I've been uh, papered this one up, filed this one up. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to leave them different finishes. I don't know how to do it. You could do something clever, like just polish that outer edge. I could stain it black one side, I don't know. Uh... I like the idea of one being different to the other. I think it will highlight highlight the shapes in between a bit more. So anyway, I filed this one up. It needs a bit more work. It's kind of flowing quite nicely. And uh, I want, it's too round. I want it more eggy shape. This one perhaps even more eggy shape than it is. So this is gonna be the bottom, sort of where the join is, where I've got it thinner. I put a little line on it and now I'm gonna use my pliers homemade homemade that's not to say inferior quality actually better than anything you can buy I'm just gonna egg it up a little bit if I can without any nasty kinks I want nice basically it's just a three-dimensional thing of nice curves it's like Look at it from the side, nice curve. It's going to be a nice eggy shape that way. Just sweep in both sides of it. And then the circle in the middle is always a nice shape. Nothing awkward, no matter how you hold it. You cannot find anything awkward. Whew. And I achieve that just by making all the curves flow nicely. It's like a transition.
it egging up a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm gripping it there, like so that's that's my line there, so there and there. I'm kind of gripping it and I'm twisting it. It's almost like putting a curve there, but very, very little. It's more, I'm not really looking at all, I'm just doing it by feel. I just, <laughs> just sort of tweaking it. There you go, a bit more eggy look. Didn't actually see any movement happen at all, but I felt it every time I did it, I felt a little, i tell you what, I'm enjoying creating a little piece of art rather than a thing. Oh, I've got to thin it off in the background. I want it, it's gone narrower, yeah, there. I want it thinner there as well at the bottom. So stuff like that, that's how a ring shank is commonly done. Stuff like that I can never escape from. I'm institutionalized for jewelry design, but that's partly what will make my contemporary pieces quite interesting. Because as far as I'm aware, normal traditional jewelers never venture into contemporary jewelry. Okay, just narrow the back a little bit. I was thinking of, like, I've gone quite flat, but I was thinking of doing something clever, not just going there, tilting it in a little bit around there. I might do that. Yeah, I'm gonna get it narrower first. I'll just put them together, let's have a look around it, just check in how both shapes are nice and fluid with each other. Not one single angle where it looks ugly or awkward. That's what I was trying to trying to achieve. So uh, any, just any, any shape, any angle. It should be a nice looking thing. Um, I can't help it, right? I just thought what I want to do is open up the solder joins and then join like, I want to join this side outer one to this side inner one and then this side inner one to that side outer one. So it'll kind of like do be like a continuous kind of shape then. I actually really like the idea of that. So I'm going to try that, which wasn't my, I wanted to keep it really simple. I think less is more quite often with artistic pieces. Um, but I really want to try that. I think it's going to be nice. If I can finish it nicely and there's no evidence of any join, it just looked like I very cleverly wrapped it up like that by hand. Uh, they look in a different colour, you may notice. It's because I warmed them up to find the solder join, which I did. Because the, if you don't know, when you heat something up, it goes all black or blue, whatever. If you freshly file silver, it goes all these beautiful blue colours and purples and stuff. Uh, as you can see, a bit of that still remaining there. But the solder always shows up, like it tarnishes, or it kind of doesn't tarnish. So you get a nice silver line. So you can clearly see it, if so you want to cut through it again. So now I've got to join that one to that one, that one to that one. Somehow, without ruining my shapes. So I was just holding them, thinking, shall I tweak it that way, or should I just pull it out? I'm going to tweak it this way. Oh, I'm going to do a bit of both. I think they've got to go this way and up and down a little bit. Pull this this way. Try not to change the shape too much. It's quite painful, this one. Uh, it's... So you can see what we've done now. So just a minor up and down tweak. I should be able to get them to line up quite nicely. God, I'm clever. If you're impressed with my cleverness, why not click like and subscribe for more cleverness in future videos. So yeah, I'm gonna tweak these a bit, get them lined up really nicely, and then solder them up. And then we've got a nice fluid thing going on. Hold these in position, see if I can get them lined up quite well. So there's less work to do when I've got one soldered up. So I'm looking at these two, yeah. So I'm holding them in position. I can have a, this one's a little bit wider. So for the step. So that little step, rather than have it there, it's gonna be more difficult to file up because it's on the inside. So I'm gonna have a little step, this one's wider. So I'm gonna have that little step on the outside of it. So that one will be soldered 
like like that. So it's making sense. Are you picking up what I'm putting down. Just thinking ahead to make my life easier. So that'll be soldered there. And if I hold those in position, then I'm just going to look at those and I can see what I need to do to get these lined up nicely. So this one needs to come up a little bit and tilt down a little bit. I can help by tilting that one a little bit as well, that way. Okay, update, update. I couldn't hold it in position with tweezers for soldering, so I've got my magic paste out. I will put a link on the screen to a, a video I've done on what this is and how to use it and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to solder this one and then tweak that one carefully and get that one joined up. I kind of like how it's doing this loopy loop, continuous loop now, but I have lost how they were one on top of the other. So I'll solder this one up and then when I'm tweaking it, I'll have a look around it and sort of think about what it is and how I might want to change it. Okay, right, I soldered them both up and it was all right. I was happy with it, but it went a bit wide at the back here. I preferred it when I had them slotted into each other, although it's still not a bad thing, but also I'm thinking, I decided I'm going to make it a ring yet, but that, I didn't make that piece going over a finger in mind. So I'm going to make a, a ring to go inside. And as this sort of loopity loop technique worked so well, I'm going to do another loop, but it will just be a ring inside. So I'm going to make another ring, like just a nice straight little simple flat ring that's going to be a finger size. And uh, then I'll do the same trick. Like open that up but this one pushing it back into the middle. So making it narrower again at this end. And it'll just go, go around once and then join onto that one. So that's how, how I'm gonna proceed and finish this. But basically I'm quite happy with it. I've got nice shapes there. And then I'm thinking because I've got cuts and joins and stuff at the back, I might get it cast just so I've got this final solid piece of metal, it's all one piece as a cast thing. And that will be my first piece of contemporary jewellery. Slightly awkward to wear because it's because it has a lot of width to it going down the sides, but I may be wrong, but for me, being slightly strange like that gives it more more points in the, on the contemporary scene. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me if I'm barking up the wrong tree with that, but I like the fact when things I like I like a contemporary piece more when it's a little bit strange somehow. For me, it adds a bit of fun to it. But yeah, I'm happy with how this is progressing and um, it's evolving as I work on it. So I like the fact that I've changed my mind a little bit as well as it's progressed. All right, been on quite a painful journey <laughs> since I last sat in front of a camera talking about this. Um, so yeah, I think last time I showed a bit on the video, it was, uh, I looped it twice and it was nice. Like I wish I'd finished it off to my best abilities and then took a video of it on a I've got this rotating little display I wanted to make a video of it rotating uh, I was going to sit it down and then put it stand it up as well just to have a look around it because it worked I had that thing going like the b-boy po one take your pictures uh, there was nothing wrong about it I liked it from I couldn't find anything I didn't like about it but just being a human and wanting to always tweak things and search for a better way, uh, it wasn't really wearable as a ring and I, I wanted it to be a ring. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna add a ring. I can't just make a ring, a straight ring and just plonk it in there. That's just gonna just be rubbish somehow. So I wanted to, I decided to curl it round once more. So I've got three loops going now and uh, design's gone all a bit, I mean, it's, it's sort of all right, but there's, there's too much going on there. I sort of don't like it as much as I did. So the, the bottom of it, yeah, these were, these were one on top of the other. And then I decided to do the loop, so they'd gone a bit wider, but I, I liked it. But I wasn't gonna go wider again, so the loop had to be thinner and then sort of go in the middle again, but then I didn't want it just hidden amongst those two, so I wanted it sticking out there. So I had to find a way to kind of bend it. Um, didn't want it wider, because I thought that was just gonna compete with space and energy from these two. So I wanted it thinner than those because it's going to be smaller. Um, so it's kind of opposite. The, these two are thin at the back and then go wider at the top. This third one is thinner at the top and then goes wider at the back so it joins on there. Um, 
it was so difficult to get it all bent up in a shape I liked and then hold it in position. I had to use my paste again to, to get it set up. And uh, I soldered it in and I soldered it in the wrong way around. I had it that way. So that bend wasn't going out, it was going in. And it was so difficult to do. And I was like, oh God. So I just, I kind of laughed and then I, I just cut it out and then put it down for the rest of the day. <laughs> so today, picked it back up. Again, had loads of trouble getting holding it in position to get it to solder, but I've done it. It's, the solder joints are rough, but it is holding quite nicely. I think I do actually need to cut that inner one. I want to cut it through and then join it up nicer, but I thought I'd show you as it is. But yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's still quite a nice shape, but it's not as nice. I need to work on that and it's difficult to get that inner edge to work around there. So I just filed it a bit around the outside. Um, looking at the side, I, I don't like it. Look, I've got a little bit of awkwardness shining through. Come on. It got, it got worse somehow. It got more wearable. Like, I like the idea of it going off the side of the little finger. I think that's quite fun. It got more wearable, but the design got more fussy from the side. A little bit of awkwardness is peeping through with this little section when I let look at that. So that, look at the spaces there. It's not bad, but it's not as good as it was, but it is more wearable. I've got a bit of a, a bit of um, conflict. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kind of wrap this video up at this stage. I, I wanna cut through that join in the middle just to tidy that join up. Um, just looking at it around the sides to try to line things up a bit nicer. Man, I had to try hard to get this finished. There was nothing easy about this. Okay, right, so let's have a look at this. What you got? It's on a rotating table. Like every, this, it rotates every 36 seconds. It does a full rotation. So let me just waffle on a bit while we look at this. Okay, yeah, basically it's quite nice, look. It's a nice shape. Looking at the transitions, looking at the gaps in between. I think something to point out here. That was a, a little bit awkward there. Looking at the overall shape. Oh, I don't like that little overall shape. Mm, oh, it's coming back nice again. It's quite satisfying to watch it, you almost see that rising up there. And then this one, these two lines run parallel at that little section. That's now dipping down. Then we've got that one as parallel with that behind. It is quite nice, I guess, at this angle. I sort of don't like that little shape there. Yeah, that's a little bit awkward there. A little section went through. Yeah, it's not. Ah. <laughs> Spin it back the other way. Let's have a looky looky. Give me something to point at it with. Right. Oh my god, that's awful. No, we don't like that. It's that new one. It ruins everything. Coming back to being nice again. Sydney Opera House. Here we go. It's quite nice. The outer one's nice. That inner one, awkward. It's just that inner one. Maybe there is a way to make it nice with that inner one. I've just done something bad with it. I like it here. All these gaps are nice. I like these shapes. I quite like it there. There's this one. I've just done something wrong with that curve there. Yeah, horrible, horrible. That middle one. It's just the middle one. Sydney Opera House. Good eye. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Okay, right, I ended it there. But it's, it's one thing making that, it's difficult enough, but actually explaining about art and what art is and what's going on in your mind and what you're creating, how you're creating it, why you're creating it, that's more difficult than actually making it itself. So I'll shut up, got some new patrons. Um, thank you very much to these people, new patrons over the last week. We got Manny Hung, Earl Bramley Howard, Mantus Jaru Savikius, Heather Melly, April Barker, Andre T, and Norman Davis. Norman Davis was uh, brand new this morning, so thank you guys. Sent you all private messages already. Um, 
yeah, really, really appreciate you becoming a patron. It really helps me continue this channel. It helps it grow. I can, I can do more. I'm about to buy some platinum and some different grades of platinum solder so I can do videos on sort of showing the differences on working with platinum solders and then with platinum as well as different things about polishing it as well. Um, talking about polishing, I'm gonna, as soon as this video is edited and done, I'm gonna do a polishing video. So I had two or three people request polishing. Um, I've got so much to talk about with polishing. I'm, it's something I'm gonna have to keep coming back to because there's different things to advise about how to hold it different mops, what they do, different polishes, what they do. Every item has a little tip and trick I can give you on how to polish it uh, to get the best results or the quickest time. Um, anyway, loads of stuff. So it's something I'm gonna have to continue to do. It won't just all be in one polishing video. So I'll start with a basic one and then, and then do more advanced stuff in the future. So yeah, I'll get on that possibly tomorrow. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, well done. Uh, they're not all like this. This is a bit of a strange video. Um, anyway, so if you liked the video, if you wanna help me out, Please click like and subscribe, helps the channel grow. Uh, yeah, and hope you join me again next time. Thanks, bye. I spit the blues like it's Channel 4 News In this mood, have I sat and we're strapping pure Zeus And I'm fumbling confused, fumbling buffoon Come and watch us flip whilst we're jumping on the moon Cause there's nothing else to do We'll make it for the sake of it We'll take the piss and make it eat the shit And leave you great in it Paint your pictures with an eagle's feather Sleeping in the sand in the land where we'll dream forever Dream forever